Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley driving to the courthouse. Today I'm going to talk to you about the relationships between clients and defense attorneys. Uh, attorney's duty, an attorney's duty is to give their best effort to do what they can to get the best result for the case. Obviously the client, right, the defendant, the person who's been charged with a crime is coming to our office to seek help. They're paying for that help, that experience, that tenacity, that passion, to do everything you can to, to maybe get the case dismissed, get the case reduced, uh, minimize jail time, minimize prison time, minimize probation, to, to do what you can do to help them. Now, it's not always perfect, right? Because sometimes you have to tell clients things that they don't want to hear. Um, had a guy many years ago and his, he was an attorney and he hired me to represent his family member and they wanted a defense. And it was this prescription pill defense where people would sleepwalk. Um, there were studies that people were sleepwalking and he wanted me to do it. The problem was that there had never been a case that was successful using that defense. I think there was a governor or senator whose attorney used it in case filing and was able to convince a prosecutor to drop the charge, but it had never been successful in a court of law. And I did a bunch of research to, to uh, discover that. And I told the, the, the father or the family member, I, I forget what it was. Hey, uh, that, 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 that defense has never been successful. And I saw a bunch of cases where people tried it, but it wasn't successful. Ultimately, they fired me and, and went somewhere else. That attorney tried to use that. You know, some attorneys will say whatever, um, but you got to be strong in, in what, if you know something is not going to be successful, you should be telling your clients it's not going to be successful. Anyway, I remember looking it up and, uh, you know, this uh, denied and, and they lost, they think they went to trial and they lost. Um, so sometimes it's a matter of like, you're telling them something that they don't want to hear. And there might be an attorney in town that'll tell them exactly what they want to hear. I call that lying, but who knows, maybe that attorney believes it. So it could be something like that, where you just give them information that, that they don't want to hear. Um, sometimes it's a personality dispute. Sometimes it's the way a client is speaking, if they start yelling and cursing, if they curse at staff, like I I'm not hanging around, I give them one opportunity to apologize and then I'm, I'm moving on. Um, many times it's lack of communication where the client just disappears. Um, they don't return phone calls, they don't return emails. And ultimately you have no choice but to get out of the, the case because you don't know where they are. Sometimes that goes hand in hand with they didn't pay you. And if they don't pay you, you know, if you, if you don't pay a, a player to be on the field, they're, they're not going to go help you win Super Bowls, right? So uh, it could be financial where they just dip because they don't have the finances. Or sometimes they end up in a jail or a prison somewhere else and you have no idea. So I, that, that kind of thing's happened before. But generally speaking, I think most clients get it they're seeking your help. They don't always like what you have to say, but if they're seeking your help um, and you're experienced and you're tenacious and you're passionate about doing it, um, sometimes a client will bring you case law. And I've had this a few times where clients go, hello, yeah, I have a family member who said, look at this case, look at this case. So I go, okay, send me the case. And then I have to go, okay, well, I read the case and compare it to the facts of their case and make a decision and distinguish them. You gotta take the time to explain to a client, hey, this is why that defense won't work, or this is why this case that you provided me is not applicable, applicable to your exact situation. Most of the time that works. Um, sometimes clients just can't make a decision and they're stuck between a plea and a trial and they don't know what to do. And all you can, you can offer advice, but if they won't, what do we say? Uh, shit or get off the pot. If they don't, 
you know, as an attorney, you'd be stuck in limbo. So, you know, you have to withdraw in those kinds of cases. So, um, generally the relationships are good. I've had repeat clients. I've had more than repeat clients. I've had people that take the time to, to write reviews, to do video reviews. Um, I've had clients that just are just great people. Um, and then I've had some, uh, you know, where I cringe when I'm around them. But if I take someone's money, if I do a contract, right? Cause you don't know, right? When they come into their office, like day one, you know, you got happy go lucky. Hey, I just need some help. Blah, blah, blah. Like you just sign a contract, you, you start. And then it turns out that, you know, your clients like the devil. Um, and now, you know, two days after they hired you, they're like, what the hell are you doing? What's going on with my case? I can't, you don't have an answer yet. Like, you know, you're like, whoa. So I've had, I've had the crazies. You try to, to limit that. And, uh, over time as an attorney, you, you learn to develop, uh, a sixth sense, a, a sense of going, yeah, this person's not someone I want to deal with. And, and you just simply don't take the case. But what happens when you have the, the client who's just like, just you and him just don't, or you and her just don't get along. Well, you put your personal feelings aside and you go out there and do everything you can to win. And that, that's the reality. So I used to talk to my old associate about it. Like, like, you know, we would have a client and, and just shake our heads like, oh my goodness, this person is just the worst of the worst. But then we go out there and win their case, right? Because we have a job to do. And the job is not to, you don't have to love all your clients. You don't have to be best friends with all your clients. You know, you don't have to have barbecues, invite your clients. The reality is, is you do have one duty and that's to give it your best, right? You, you take an oath under God to, to do your best. Every time I say that, I think of the Cub Scouts. I can do my best to do my duty honor. Um, I was in Cub Scouts for like a year when I was a little kid. Um, you have one duty as an attorney and that's to, to, to give your client what you got, like do your best to help. Um, what about the situations when you disagree with the defense? Huh. If I disagree with the defense, I have the client sign something in writing, I say, look, I don't think we should go that way. Or even for trial, there are cases that should not be, that should not go to trial because you know that the facts are not going to support a victory. I have a client sign a waiver. Like, listen, I understand Mr. Foley has explained to me the positives and negatives of the case. It's my choice to go to trial, but it is what it is. Um, sometimes it's, it's uh, arguing something. Now, if a client asks me to argue something, that I know was false, <clears throat> I won't do it. It's an ethics issue. I'm not going to do it. If my client told me, well, da 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 da, like I'm not, I'm just not going to do that. Um, and yeah, I might end up withdrawing, but I'm very open and honest with my clients from the beginning. I tell them what to expect from me. And that's that I'm going to give you my best, but I'm going to do it the, uh, the honest, the ethical way. I'm not going to take any shortcuts. I'll file the appropriate motions. I'll make the, the appropriate arguments to the court and I'll do everything to come up with a theme if you want to go to trial and, and, and have that day in court. But um, communication is very important to a relationship, to any relationship, especially those that are charged with a crime and facing incarceration. So um, when you get into that situation, make sure that you pick someone, it doesn't have to be someone that will be your best friend, but make sure that you have that feeling about them that they're willing to fight for you, whether they like you or dislike you, or whether there's bumps in the road during the course of the, the representation. It's important. So I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Thanks for listening. Subscribe. See ya. We need to call Foley, man. You got a charge, the situation tense You need an attorney for criminal defense Call R.P. Foley